This video is sponsored by Logitech. Hey beautiful people, I'm Lucy and today we are talking all about how you can speed up your photo editing process. Now, there is kind of a running joke with Lightroom that it's an awesome software, but it's a little bit slow. Now, it kind of is, but there are things that we can do to speed up our Lightroom editing process and just make it a lot more enjoyable. Now, let's just keep the ball rolling. I'm gonna get into my first tip, which is culling and selecting the photos that you're going to edit. This is so important and can save you so much time. Now, what I like to do is I import my entire card, and then once I have the collection, I go through every photo. Now, we take so many photos now, hundreds, sometimes thousands of photos, and that's the benefit of digital. Uh, and also it means that we have more chances of getting a good photo. But the negative side is now we have to go through a thousand photos and pick which ones we actually want to edit. You want to make this process as fast as possible and you wanna start being really decisive. When I first started editing, I was incredibly indecisive. I would edit the same version of a photo, like five different photos I would edit and they would be almost identical. So you want to pick the photo that you're gonna edit first and then really narrow down that group. Now, what I like to do is we have all our photos here. I like to reject the photos that I know are trash and garbage and I never wanna see again. And then I like to flag or pick the photos that I know I actually want to edit. And if I'm unsure, I just don't do anything. So the first thing that you're gonna do is, if you know you don't like a photo, you hit the X key on your keyboard and it's rejected. If you know that, oh, I kind of like this, I'm gonna edit it, you press the P key on your keyboard and that gives it this little flag here. But what you're noticing is when I pick it, it's still staying on it. I have to go with the arrow key to go to the next one or I have to click it. We wanna speed that up and we want to just make this process really, really quick. So a fun little trick is make sure you are in the library panel. It won't work if you're in develop, you have to be in library go over to photo and we're going to pick auto advance so what this actually does is once i choose to either reject or pick a photo it's going to automatically go to the next picture so so i'm going to say love it love it love it mm, no x maybe you could do something with that not sure if you're not sure hit the u key it just doesn't do anything uh, pick pick X, X, X. Now, the thing that's important about actually rejecting photos is this keeps your Lightroom catalog and your disk space clear and free. So once you've picked all the ones that you're gonna reject, we're gonna go up to photo, we're gonna go down here and select delete rejected photos. You're gonna have this little dialogue pop up and it's gonna say, are you sure? Do you wanna just remove them from the catalog or delete them from the disk? With rejecting photos, we've only gone with the photos that are utter trash, that we totally hate, that we know we are never gonna use. So you wanna hit delete from disk. This takes it off of your hard drive or your computer. Wherever you're saving it, it's gone forever and you're saving that space. So we're gonna go delete from disk. So this is my favorite way to pick my photos that I'm gonna edit, get rid of the ones I know I'm never gonna use. And the ones that you have flagged Actually, then you can go at the end and click this little flag here under filter, and it's only gonna show me my favorite photos. So now I can actually just go along, edit one by one the photos that I really, really love. All right, so my next tip is to use Lightroom keyboard shortcuts. And in my last tip, I kind of gave you guys a teaser on how these work with using the X key to reject photos, the P key to pick or flag photos. So there are so many other shortcuts. And if you wanna see all of them for yourselves, just go to the help button here and put develop module shortcuts and you are going to see all of the different shortcuts. There are a ton, but I have a few of my favorites. So if you guys wanna go, you can check them all out here, but I'll tell you some of my favorites right now. I use the L key for lights out and what this does is it hides everything else in Lightroom of the software and just lets you look at your photo. Another one that I like is using the R key to go immediately into crop mode. You can also use the Q key to bring up spot removal. You can use the M key to bring up a graduated filter if you wanna throw one of those in. 
There are so many Lightroom keyboard shortcuts and it's just a really great way to speed up your editing and bring in the tools that you want. Now, my third tip ties in with using shortcuts and the sponsor of this video, which is Logitech and the MX Anywhere 3 mouse. I am loving this mouse, so thank you Logitech for sending it to me. Um, you can use this mouse with three devices, uh, your computer, your laptop, Mac, PC, it works with anything and it is a great travel mouse. So I use it with my laptop, I use it in the car, you can use it at a client meeting, anywhere. You can just kind of throw this in your bag, it's pretty durable, and take it with you. But the thing that I love, love about this mouse is that you can actually use those keyboard shortcuts that I talked about and assign them to the different buttons in the mouse, which is amazing. And this even saves you more time because now instead of going over to your keyboard, picking your thing, and then to your mouse to do what you wanna do, you can just do it all in the mouse. So I'm gonna just show you how this works. I'm gonna bring up the Logi Options um, app. So once you bring up the app, you can actually assign whatever you want to all of the buttons on the mouse. And the thing that I think is so cool about this is you can go by application. So you can set different functions for Photoshop, Lightroom, Chrome, whatever application you're in, you can set the buttons to do what you want specific to that application, which is awesome. So let's pick the Adobe Lightroom Classic application. And I'm gonna show you guys how I actually assigned the buttons on mine. So for the scroll wheel here, I actually did the backslash, which is the before and after key. Uh, here is copy settings. And then these two on the side are my most used tools in Lightroom. So I have jumping to the clone tool or the heel tool and then the brush tool. Um, I use brush and mask all the time in Lightroom. So those are the tools that I'm using the most and those are why I chose to assign it to the mouse. So who knew adding a mouse could actually make your editing process super fast. The other quick thing I'll mention about the mouse is it lasts 70 days on a single charge, which is crazy. And it's just an awesome portable mouse to throw in your bag and go and take anywhere. So yeah, highly suggest it. And thanks to Logitech for sponsoring this video. Okay, next up, we are gonna talk about now doing bulk editing. So we've gone ahead, we've picked our favorite photos, and now we actually have to go ahead and edit them. Now with this one, I've edited one, I like the style of it. One of the easiest ways is to just do the copy the setting. So I'm gonna do, hit that middle button on the keyboard here and I can bring up all the settings. So I can hit copy, go to the next photo in the series, hit control V, and then I've pasted those settings onto that photo. Now, if you find that you have an edit that you really, really love, so I love how this one looks, there's the before and there's the after, just adding a lot of contrast, making it a lot more exciting. Another really easy way I can just say, you know what, all of these photos are the same lighting, the same location, hit shift and select all the photos that you want to give that same edit to. And then I'm going to hit sync. It's gonna let me choose what I want to sync, what I don't want to sync. Things you don't wanna sync, probably spot removal um, and local adjustment like brush and things like that. Graduated filters I'll keep, but I'll take the brush off just because those things don't really work photo to photo. And then we hit synchronize. And what that's gonna do is it gives the exact same edit to all of these photos. And then I don't have to really go in and do anything because I know that I like those settings. Now with bulk photo editing, normally I actually do wanna go in and make some changes with the brush tool to enhance certain elements of the photo. This is like doing masking. So if on this one say I wanted to increase the contrast and the texture and the sharpness actually on the jacket here, we can make those changes there. Now, when I go to my next image, I have to continuously go and recreate this brush. A lot of people don't know this, but what you can actually do is once you find the settings that you like, you can actually go over here to where it says custom. We're gonna click custom, and now what we can do is we can actually save current settings to a new preset. So you can save your brush settings to a preset. So you're just basically keeping that brush 
and you can use it all the time. Now, it might not work for different locations or different shoots, but definitely when you're working for, with photos from the same shoot, and you find a look that looks good, either a brush on a face for making it more clear or for clothing, making it stand out, you definitely wanna do this. So I'm gonna say, save current settings as a new preset, and I'm gonna say, fall photo shoot one clothing. Create and done. So now what I can do is I can head on over to the next one, and when I pick the brush, I can go and pick fall photo shoot clothing one or any of my other ones and it brings those settings into the brush right away. And I don't have to fiddle with recreating those brush settings every single time. All right, and now for my last tip, and this is the simplest of all the tips. It is so easy to do, but it makes such a big difference. You know when you close out of Lightroom and it says that dialog box that says, do you wanna back up your catalog? And you always say no, I always say no. Say yes once in a while, but if you wanna do it just right when you get into Lightroom, go up to File and press this Optimize Catalog uh, button. Literally, this is the quickest thing that you can do, but if you are experiencing lag or you feel like your Lightroom software is running slowly, please do this. It's so easy and so quick. So we're just gonna go optimize. It could take a few minutes depending on how much work needs to be done, um, but I find that it's actually pretty quickly. And then you just hit okay. So that's definitely the easiest tip to speed up your Lightroom editing. I hope that you guys liked all of these tips. I hope that you have a bit more fun editing and um, you just can edit a bit more quickly. I know that makes me enjoy it a lot and I've been having a lot of fun lately doing a ton of edits. I'd love to know how you guys have been, what photos you're working on. Leave that down in the comments and uh, I will see you guys next week. Peace out, lots of love.